What's up, everybody? We are Deanna and Phil. And in this video, we are going to discuss five German things that are very interesting to me, and we would love your feedback on these topics. Number one, why is there a formal and informal version of the word you? <laughs> Germany has two versions to address someone as you. There's du, which is the informal version for, you know, friends and family and etc. And then there's Z, which is the formal version for older people, colleagues, etc. <laughs> so my question is, do Germans get offended if someone uses the informal version do with you? Because I speak mostly with family and friends and I have to actively remember to use Z if I'm asking a question at like the supermarket or the bakery, because that is where I go most often. To separate these, it was so normal growing up in Germany. Especially as a kid, you Zs everybody. Because most people are older than you and you should be polite as a kid. You only say do to your friends and family, really. Everybody else, like teachers or parents or friends or any strangers, they are all Z. And now as grown-ups, it can make for uncomfortable situations as well. For example, if you have a hard time estimating the age of somebody, and then if you say do to the wrong person, they might feel disrespected. Or if you say Z to somebody casual, they might feel old or if there is no casual relationship between you and them. It was one of the nicest things in English to just have the one you and you don't need to focus on etiquette when using it. That's just so convenient. Yeah, even when I worked in a corporate office, we wouldn't address people by like Mr. Smith or something. We would just address everyone by their first name. I remember when I was fresh out of college in my penguin suit, I initially called my boss Mr. Anderson. Oh, Mr. Anderson. Name changed for privacy reasons. <laughs> and he got weirded out so much and he was like, no, 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 call me by my first name. Like yeah. it was weird. It's like, that's my dad. Right? <laughs> he said that actually. Yeah, I would do that. Yeah. That would be the cool boss. That's normal. Not in Germany. <laughs> okay. In my old job in the office, in the corporate office, there are totally people who insist of being called Z. Yeah. Why? I feel like that's someone who just desperately wants to hold on power, like a power or status position, but I don't really know. I want to know from all of you guys watching, would you be offended if someone uses the informal do to you? Or do you not care? Yeah. Number two, why does everyone want me to cover my neck? <laughs> Maybe this is because I've mostly lived in warmer climates all my life and I've only ever visited northern areas, but everyone here in Germany tells me to wear a scarf, cover your neck. You're the one always telling me, you're like, cover your neck! Wear a hat. <laughs> Why? Even if it's just 20 degrees Celsius but slightly windy, your mom is like, ooh, you need a scarf when you go outside. Yeah, psh, I mean, typical privileged people from warm weather, I guess. <laughs> Don't you know that you get sick in Germany as soon as the first breeze hits your exposed neck? Yes, yes, that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, in fall, people just get sick left and right all the time. So when summer ends and it's starting to get a little cooler, we have to remind ourselves to wear scarves and thicker clothes because I think depending on the person, it's so much easier to catch a cold at that time. But then, yeah, some moms can exaggerate a little bit. And some fills. Nah, I'm not that. <laughs> I just hate tight clothes around my neck. When I was a kid, my mom tried to get me to wear turtlenecks all the time. Ugh, ugh, I hate it. Before we continue, guys, we're on the road to 100,000 subs and it would be awesome if we can hit that by the end of the year. And I know a lot of you that watch these videos are not subscribed, so help us out and maybe we can reach that goal by the end of the year and subscribe now. And if you want to further support us, you can do that on patreon.com slash Deanna and Phil. We have different tiers and benefits that you can get there. And today we want to shout out our family level Patreons. A big thank you to Marcus Odensman, Fred42, Ethan Mitchell, Heather Kuffner, Hessen Metro, Jay Reed, Shar Mills, Tarek Malkosh, Stephanie Vend, Jörg Michels, Megan Rosati, Shannon Bradley, Sean and Alex, Klaus Isaac, Holden Gilbert, Lee Lim, and Robert J. Casper. Big thank you to you guys, you. but now back to the video. Number three, why does the birthday person pay on their birthday? because it's their birthday. Okay. <laughs> We've had a lot of birthdays these past few months and I know the German thing is you're not supposed to wish someone a happy birthday ahead of time. God forbid you try to give them a small gift <laughs> because you're happy about their birthday ahead of time. Just 
don't do it. But why does the birthday girl or guy have to pay for drinks on their birthday? In the US, if you go out for drinks with your friends on your birthday, you usually don't have to pay for your meal or drinks because your friends would probably offer to pay for it. And that just is the more normal thing well, to do. You must have had some very nice friends. <laughs> No, that's pretty normal. Yeah, so I see your point. But here in Germany, if it's your birthday, you usually pay for drinks or food if you invite people. And <laughs> if you have some type of party at home, you are providing most of the drinks and yeah. the food, of course. Yeah. The bring your own beer thing isn't that common. And it kind of depends on the kind of invitation and how official the whole party is. Yeah, that is so strange to me still. So I have a question then. Are surprise birthdays a thing in Germany? Because someone else would have to organize that and set it up for you. Uh, very good question. I have never been to one. I never <laughs> planned one or I never heard of one in my friend's environment. So I'm not sure, but I would say they are not a big thing. Maybe let us know in the comments yeah. if you had surprise parties in Germany before and if you paid for the birthday person then. <laughs> I'm really curious. Maybe you just bill them later, send them an invoice <laughs> then afterwards. No. Then no, yeah. You're welcome that I threw you this party. Here's the bill, uh, <laughs> that's 749 you, euros. You get an invoice after your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you had fun, but you know what comes next, <laughs> right? Give Obligation. Me the Number four, why do you include photos on your CV or resume or apartment applications? In the US, we usually do not include our photos in job applications or apartment applications, but based on my experience working internationally and from Phil here in Germany, it seems very normal to include a nice glamour shot on your CV. <laughs> Um, yeah, you always call it a glamour shot. It's a glamour shot. But yeah, every job application has a picture of you on the top. And it's usually a very professionally taken shot. Like people groom and then they dress up in their best suit and then they go to the photographer and have these taken like professionally. You are supposed to look very professional, but you should also smile a bit. Like a friendly professional, I guess. Dude, dude, it's such a fancy shot. You're not wearing a suit every day and you don't have this half turned angle all the time. Yeah, which it's is like, like the... Oh. That's the glamour shot. You grab the tie. <laughs> Yeah, I Cringe. think there should be a little bit more <laughs> casual, but overall I was surprised that this isn't normal in the US. Like, I think it's a good idea to have a picture of somebody so you can remember that or, you know, have a link in your head to that person. But I also think hiring people is super biased and more attractive people probably have it way easier. Phil even does this for apartment applications to yeah. better our chances. <laughs> yeah. So are you calling yourself attractive? Oh, I haven't, I haven't worked out so far. <laughs> did before though, I did that and it worked. And I got complimented on that. Like, oh, I liked your application to your apartment. Really? Yeah. People complimented your glamour shot on your application. Yeah. The real estate agent, oh, such a nice uh, application. But a uh, question to you again, uh, which country are you from? And do you include a photo of yourself on a job application? That would be very interesting. Number five is, are Germans offended by how Germans are portrayed in media and Hollywood? So I was never as aware as I am now on how often there is a German character or reference to something German in the media I consume. From Hollywood movies to the manga that I read, there are often German characters and stereotypes that I am now aware of. I noticed that too, like watching Hollywood shows and movies, yeah. and I'm always seeing the German character often portrayed as very, I don't know, Bavarian or very clumsy or super intense without any humor. Before YouTube or before coming to Germany, movies were my primary exposure to German culture and Klaus was my go-to stereotypical name for German because, yeah, because in the movies that I watched, they often had a German character named Klaus with the stereotypical accent that I cannot do. For example, Klaus from How I Met Your Mother yeah. and... <laughs> Yeah, there's probably some others I can't think of right now. Um, I think it could be perceived as slightly offensive, but it's mostly exaggerated stereotypes for comedic purposes, I guess. And some people are actually a little bit like that, so I don't really care and I think we really shouldn't care that much. National Pride does not do any good anyways, 
So, but on the flip side, there are a lot of stereotypical American characters in the media around the world as well. And I don't know, do you get offended by them? Not really, but it's probably the same because the stereotypical American is usually like a Texas stereotype which a, more, a majority of the US doesn't identify with. Yeah. But I guess it's kind of the same in Hollywood. Hollywood tends to portray Asian characters as like nerds or kung fu masters, and it's, uh, it's just overused a bit. Yeah, that's true. So again, question to you. If you are German, do you get offended by how Germans are portrayed in movies and the media? Let us know in the comments below. Yeah. All right, so those were five things that Deanna found a little funny or peculiar German when things. coming to Germany. Yeah. Um, let us know if you agree with these or not. But yeah. yeah, that's the end of the video. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye. A big thank you to everyone who watches our videos and supports us. And a special thank you to our patrons for supporting us and helping us to make videos like these. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.